Now, with reference lists, this is something that comes at the end of your document, and it should start on a new page. And your reference list must include all the work cited in your document and vice versa. Again, there are a few exceptions to this rule, but generally speaking, uh, for most papers that you can see out there, for most scholarship you can see out there in APA style, uh, there's going to be a one-for-one -one connection between them. This is a little bit different if you're used to some other styles out there like Chicago, where you could potentially have a bibliography that includes sources that you consulted, but that you did not cite directly. APA does not um, ask for you to do that, does not want you to do that, so uh, make sure you don't add sources to your reference list that are not in your uh, text of your paper. Now, with reference list citation, uh, all the information about the publication uh, you need to identify and cite it properly is right here. It's uh, the author, the date, the title, and the source information for retrieval. So this is the order that it comes in in your reference list as well. Sometimes you're missing one of these pieces of information. And that's okay. You can. Uh, there are ways to work with that. Uh, and uh, generally speaking, what, even though it follows this kind of basic format, there are sometimes little complexities depending on the type of source that you might be using. So this usually uh, comes up uh, where that complexity comes in is typically with the source information for retrieval where there's going to be some uh, special formatting depending on that source type. Let's take a look at some of the more common source types. Uh, I'm not going to cover all of them in this presentation, but here's some just common ones. So uh, with a journal article in a reference list format, we have the author of uh, the, the article or authors, if we had multiple authors. And you'll see it's going to be last name, comma, and then the initials. And the initials are going to have periods uh, after them and spaces between the initials. And that's going to be followed by the year in parentheses, and then there's a period that follows the, that year in the parentheses. Again, it's going to be in this very particular order. This makes it easy for your reader to look up in the alphabetical list of your reference list. They're going to look for that last name and the author because it's going to be in text. And then if the, the author uh, created multiple works that you've included in your paper, then they're going to take a look at the year so that they can clarify uh, which one of those it might be. Then after that, we have the title of the article and the subtitle of the article, if there is a subtitle. And one of the things that's uh, particular about APA is that it has you do titles in uh, sentence case rather than in title case for article titles. So you'll see that the capitalization here is purposeful. Title of article, the A in article is lowercase. But the start of a subtitle is capitalized with the S in subtitle. That is going to be capitalized. Uh, if there's a proper noun in there or an acronym, then we would also be capitalizing that just like we would in a, a normal sentence. Uh, but there is uh, mostly use of lowercase. Now, the title of the journal, that's a little bit different. It's in italics, uh, and you are going to be using title case. So again, with the example you see on the screen, title of journal, the Jane journal is purposefully capitalized because you would be capitalizing that. Follow that with a comma. We're still in italics here, by the way, so we're, we're keeping with the italics. And then the volume number follows that, and that's also going to be in italics. Now, after that, there is no space. Uh, the issue number in parentheses immediately follows the volume number, and the issue number is not in italics. Now, with the APA 6 edition, if that happens to be a style that you were used to at one point, uh, you didn't necessarily include the issue numbers, and with the, the newer APA, um, it does encourage you to, to include the issue numbers um, because that's going to be helpful in, in most cases. And many journals have uh, no longer used something that is called continuous pagination. You'll still see it with uh, a number of journals out there, though. A continuous pagination is basically when a journal starts with... Uh, uh, issue one of a volume and then they keep counting up their page numbers through the entire volume so they might have four issues and after issue one issue two will start up with the page number that issue one let uh let off with um so that that does um still happen depending on the journal that you're looking at and that's why why sometimes you'll see like really high page numbers when issues are not even um all that big 
And there's a com comma that's going to be after the issue number in parentheses, and then you have the page number range. Now, one thing to be really clear about here is that you see uh, I'm using the PP to indicate for uh, pages. You don't include that uh, in your, your reference list. You just include the actual numbers themselves with a dash between the numbers. And uh, uh, a reader that's familiar with APA is going to just know that that's the page number range. And then uh, you follow it off with a period. Now, if you have a DOI number, uh, DOI stands for Digital Object Identifier. It's a unique number for a journal article or potentially even books and chapters. Uh, there's some other sources out there that get assigned DOIs as well. Not every source has a DOI. So when you don't have a DOI, you can admit it. You don't need to include the DOI because the DOIs do cost money and not every journal will pay for that DOI service. Now, if it does have a DOI, though, you're going to want to make sure you include that. That's actually pretty good information. Uh, it's the most exact identifying information that is anywhere in this reference list. Uh, and so you'll want to make sure that that's included. And so you want to use this format here where it is in URL format. Um, if you're familiar with APA 6, uh, there, there was the uh, previous iteration before they introduced URLs a little bit later on uh, where you did not use a URL format, but now you're being asked to use a U URL format. So that's uh, that HTTP uh, colon slash slash DX dot DOI dot org slash, and then you take that digital object identifier number and you go ahead and you put that right at the end of that URL, and then your reader is going to be able to look it up really quickly. So taking a look at a journal article example, um, in this case, for this actual journal article, we see that there are multiple authors that are going to be listed. So uh, how that's different from the previous example that we were looking at before is um, we are using the last names and the initials, but then we have that ampersand that is showing up in the author name list. And uh, we want to make sure that it's an ampersand, not the word and. Uh, it sounds picky, but that's act um, that's one of the technicalities within APA that you want to make sure you watch out for. We use that, and then we have the year, and we have that title the, of the article, and you'll notice that because Koreans is a proper noun, we have the capitalized K, but other than that, it's in sentence case, and the Journal of Mental Health Counseling, you see that we have the volume number 27 in italics, but then the issue number 3 is not in italics, but it is in parentheses, comma, and then the page number range, 266 to 281, and then we follow that with that uh, DOI that uh, looks like a URL. Now, if we have a journal article without a DOI, it's going to, to look a little bit different. So in this case, we have, again, the last name of the, the author and the initials, the year, the, the title of the article itself, not in italics, uh, but in sentence case, then we have the title of the journal. In this case, it's the Lancet uh, in italics and in title case. And that volume number 371, the Lancet's been around for a long time, so that's why it's so high. And you see one of those uh, examples of a really high issue number as well, 9,630. And the page number range there, 2078 to 2079. But there's no DOI for us to be using, so we're not including that in this, and there's no retrieve from URL to, that we would be using either. Now, oftentimes, uh, many articles do get published online, and they don't necessarily need a DOI. They don't really need uh, uh, to have that for, for the access. They're published open access so that anyone in the world is able to get that scholarship without a subscription. So in this example, everything looks fairly uh, similar to what we've seen before. But the difference is, is that we add that URL where someone is going to be able to get access to the source right at the end. And you want to use a URL that gets your reader, uh, if not directly to the source, as close as possible to the source as possible. You don't want to just drop them into the journal homepage and make them navigate to that article. Uh, you want to make sure that it, it gets them pretty much to where they want to go. So uh, make sure the site uh, very directly in that sense. So here's a book example where we have a single author in this case, last name, the initial, the year. Uh, we have the, the title of it where it's going to be in sentence case in italics and the start of a subtitle, since we have a subtitle on this one, is capitalized. 
and then we have the publisher at the end and since we don't have a URL we don't have to include anything extra. Now this is also a little bit different from, from APA 6 in that you used to indicate the location that it was published, that the book was published. Uh, this got more and more confusing with um, the sort of um, international growth of publishing and and there would be books published in many different places at the same time many different cities and so uh, uh, with the update to APA they have done away with the location on publishing for citing web pages um, since that's increasingly common uh, the APA style manual is a little bit better about this uh, this time around. Uh, APA 6 was a little bit vague with some of its guidance, but there's a lot better information now. Uh, we still want to do basic, the same kind of basic approach that we see with some of the other sources out there, where we have the author or authors, the date, the title of the work, a document title and or description could, can be added to it, and then that address URL. So it's very similar to that journal article example we saw just a moment ago. Okay, let's take a look at citing websites. In the example that I have here, I purposely chose one that was coming from a government source uh, because it helps to uh, illustrate how you, you might also use organizations as authors. Uh, there are many documents out there, especially coming from uh, government sources, where they have organizations as the authors rather than an individual. And when you have organizations as authors, you want to make sure that you use the entire name of the organization. I kind of chose one here that's a little bit overkill, the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs, Vocational Rehabilitation and Employment Services, um, because um, it, it just kind of helps illustrate how you want to make sure that you have that whole organization name. Because especially with government sources, there can be subunits within an or organization or uh other things along those lines. And we're striving for precision here, so we want to make sure that we have it as close as possible. Now, uh, again, this author name should also be in text with uh, the paper, too. And so you might be wondering, well, if I'm citing the source multiple times, doesn't this get a little bit unwieldy? And the way that you deal with that is that you list the entire name the first time around, and if it's an in, in an in-text citation, then you can establish the use of an acronym after that by putting that into square brackets, and then you can use that acronym uh, from, from then on, and then that helps uh, make it a little bit easier. So we have that organization name uh, listed there, uh, followed by a period, and then the year in parentheses, followed by a period, and the title of the page followed by a period, just like we saw in uh, many of our other sources. The titles of pages can be a little bit tricky sometimes for uh, uh, government sources or other web sources because they're um, they're not always at the clearest things to, to find. There may be like three different elements on a page that could potentially be the title. Um, so you want to just kind of do your best in terms of what is uh, the, the title that makes the most sense to be using. Uh, but also a tip on how to, to kind of go with what might be the, the thing that comes across best as the, as the title is to take a look in the tab at the top of your browser and see what title they're using there for uh, in, in the tab because that's oftentimes going to be the best, most direct title to be using. And then after that, we follow it with a URL that goes as directly to the source as possible, just like with uh, our uh, journal article that we looked at a moment ago, we want to make sure that we're not making people kind of uh, hunt around for the information that they're looking for and they can get directly to what they want.